You know, we're really fortunate here in the Santa Barbara area to have some wonderful non-profit organizations doing some great work in our community. One of those groups is CALM. With us today to talk about their organization is Deborah Holmes. She is our Associate Executive Director of CALM. We also have Laurie Goodman, Director of Development at CALM, and Ben Ladinig, CALM Board Member and Deputy District Attorney. Thank you all for being here today. Tell us what exactly is CALM? Well, CALM's mission is to prevent, assess, and treat child abuse in Santa Barbara County. And we do that by providing therapeutic services to children and their families where trauma has been experienced, and also by being out in the community and helping to prevent abuse, strengthen families, and raise awareness. Wonderful. And you've been around 40 years. Tell me, that, that's, that's a lot of work you've been doing. Well, Calm has a really wonderful, sad but wonderful beginning. Calm started um, in response to the death of an infant. Um, a young father, 19 years old, shook his baby. And um, Claire Miles, our founder, was the wife of the attending physician the night the baby died. Um, and she was very disturbed by this story and followed the case in the news. And the young man said, I didn't want to hurt my baby. I just didn't know what else to do. So this gave her a very simple idea. She took out a second phone line in her house and she got all of her friends to sit around that phone in her kitchen 24 seven. And she put a small ad in the paper that said stressed parents call this number. In the first month, she had 35 phone calls and she knew she had touched a cord. So that, that's how we started. That's amazing. Um, now, it became clear very quickly that parents needed more than just a friendly voice on the phone. They need um, counseling, they need access to services, they need all kinds of things. And so we became a professionalized therapeutic organization um, that is focused both on the prevention and on the treatment of child abuse. Wonderful. So, Deborah, tell me a little about the scope of CALM's work. Mm. Well, as Laurie mentioned, our mission is to prevent, assess, and treat child abuse. But it, within that, we have a tremendous array of services, comprehensive services that are targeted depending on the age of the child, the needs of the family, what kind of abuse may have occurred, and also um, whether we're looking at a prevention type situation uh, where we may start very, very early, even prenatally, or a family that needs treatment where abuse has gone on for a while and there's been exposure to trauma. So we have um, an array of services from prenatal to 21, and within that many evidence-based practices, which means they're shown to be effective that are designed to address those particular needs of those children and those families. And what sort of abuse are we talking about? I mean, you must see you know, such a wide range, but tell us a little about what sort of child abuse you come across and you work with. Yes. Well, um, sadly, abuse can take many forms. And actually the number one type of child abuse that we see the most is neglect, which sometimes surprises people because it doesn't necessarily get the same kind of attention in the media as something like say sexual abuse or even physical abuse. We work with neglect, we work with sexual abuse, we see children who've been physically abused where there are bruises and marks or cigarette burns on their bodies or broken bones Sadly, we also sometimes see, um, as Laurie mentioned, with the beginnings of CALM, babies who are shaken and where, who sustain brain damage because of that. And um, so it's every kind of abuse we're able to address and help with. 
and also, as Laurie also mentioned, prevention. Because more and more we want to focus on preventing abuse before it happens. So getting in to work with those families and see those children when there may be risk factors for abuse, but nothing bad has happened yet. Right. So we can get in there and help them. Well, on that note, what are some of the risk factors for child abuse? There can be many risk factors. Um, one of the risk factors is poverty. And um, families living in poverty who can't meet their basic needs have a lot more what we call psychosocial stress. Um, they, that will often affect their parenting and even their ability to care for their children and provide for all their needs. Also, we see that substance abuse and addiction definitely can play a role in child abuse, not always. I'm, I'm talking now about, it doesn't mean because you're poor, you're going to abuse your child any more than because you have an untreated mental illness, you might, but those are predisposing factors. So substance abuse, mental illness, poverty, and also if you're somebody who experienced abuse as a child and you have never really resolved it and you become a parent, there's more propensity to continue a cycle of abuse. So we always think about parents and their history. Have they been exposed to trauma? Because if they have, they may need some help with parenting. Now I know that is one of your big goals, is to break the cycle. Tell us, uh, you, you touched on it there, but tell us just a little bit more about how do you break the cycle? Mm. That's such a good question. You can do it in different ways. I mean, one way that we think about a lot is when somebody's pregnant and about to have a new family, because they're really very open at that time for help and support, and it's, it's an exciting thing, perhaps, in their lives. And so we think about helping, supporting those families with parenting and making sure they have a support system that can help them in a time of need, um, preparing them for the responsibilities, the big responsibility of having a child and raising a child. So that can be uh, part of how we break that cycle. But it can happen at any time. Um, even a family where abuse has occurred, who were coming to calm, we can work with them on healing the trauma of the abuse, uh, looking at what was going on in the family that created those risk factors, and then address them. And in doing so, hopefully the next generation of children will not have to endure what they went through. Absolutely, that's, that's such important work, and that's wonderful that you're doing it. Ben, over to you. <laughs> what is your involvement with CALM? Well, I'm a board member. I'm a prosecutor here in the city of Santa Barbara, but I've been a prosecutor countywide for the last eight years. And CALM is hugely instrumental in what we do with respect to law enforcement. CALM is wholly independent of law enforcement, not beholden to law enforcement in any way, but CALM is very, very assistive to us in law enforcement because you can imagine a child who's subject to physical, emotional, or sexual abuse and having to discuss that with an adult. That can be a very uh, anxious ridden situation for that young child and what CALM does is assist us in actually interviewing the child in a arena, a setting that is conducive to the child actually speaking freely and honestly about that. You can imagine a child, whether you know he or she would be speaking at age seven or eight to a six foot four, 250 pound detective with a gun and a mustache, asking her questions about a very secret situation that a family member or a friend may have done to that little boy or girl, as opposed to a child forensic interviewer who's trained in how to ask questions of that young person. And in a setting where we have teddy bears, we've got, appropriate level seats for the, the interviewer from Calm to ask the child about what happened. And that is so important to us as far as our prosecutions for sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, and what Lori and Deborah talked about, neglect. Oftentimes cases of neglect are, are so apparent in, in our situation, yet to the public they would not think that, that, that neglect would be so prevalent, but it is. So, 
calm has been has been very important to us in, in law enforcement and even in cases where we've got drug endangered children uh, methamphetamine oftentimes is is uh, a, a drug that's that's plagued uh, those in our county and outside of our county and and to to give give parents who are involved in that um, very addictive drug the the means and, and and the counseling in order to get out of that situation to make the child safer that's where calm benefits us I think calm gets uh, there's a perception that calm breaks up families and that's the farthest thing from the truth calm tries to prevent kids and parents to getting into the criminal justice system that's why they're so upfront early on very early on in fact during pregnancies and whatnot with parents that are at risk to avoid the kids and the parents to get into the criminal justice system to try and prevent some abuse from happening so it's a it's a huge component of what we do a partnership with calm now what made you decide to become involved personally by becoming part of the board well I, I deal with Cecilia Rodriguez who's the current executive director of calm I deal with her oftentimes as far as her testifying in cases of child molestation or abuse to a child because oftentimes in the past she has done our child forensic interviews I too am I'm a father a father of two and um, children are very important to me and so I took a, an interest in calm because I think there's no there's, there's not a better organization out there in order to help our children than what we have in the county right now in, in CALM. And so I think that because I'm a father, because I'm a prosecutor, because I am uh, on, almost on a daily basis involved in, in investigations of crimes involving our most innocent and youngest of children, that I think it's imperative that somebody from our office get involved with CALM so that our voice can be heard and we can assist in calm growing and getting better and learning from us and us learning from them. Absolutely. And how effective do you find calm is in the community? Well, uh, hugely effective. I think calm's reputation is is beyond reproach. They're very well respected on what they do with our children, the counseling, the therapies, and the child forensic interviews that we have to defend in court to uh, avoid the suggestion that the child, that the, what the child talked about with, with the abuse was planted in the head. What, what the calm therapists, the calm interviewers are so well trained in what they do to get a full disclosure because as you can imagine, disclosure is such a process. No child will disclose in the same way or in the same manner or even disclose at all so we understand how difficult disclosure can, can be. And CALM is really the conduit for us in our office to get real disclosure, truthful, accurate disclosure that we can further our investigation and further our prosecutions. It's, it's, it's a huge component to what we do. Have you seen an increase in prosecution of perpetrators as a result, do you feel, of the work that you do with CALM? Well, I think I, yes, and there's also, we are better able to, because when these investigations are done with the assistance of CALM, uh, then we can see they're usually video and audio taped in a setting where the child's going to be comfortable. And so we can really assess the nature and extent of the disclosure and whether or not we can pr proceed with the prosecution. We're always mindful, though, of the child's wishes because we don't want to push children into courtroom situations. It is, uh, there's been times where I've come, come home from a trial involving a young girl and I've hugged my daughter for 15 minutes straight simply because I had a young girl who had to testify all day in front of total strangers and talk about abuse that happened to her from somebody that she knew and trusted. So there, it's very difficult, but with, with Calm's assistance, it does assist us in our prosecutions greatly. And yes, I, I do think that because of the tried and true interview uh, techniques and protocols that calm therapists and counselors use, we then can justify our prosecutions even more so today. That's wonderful. Laurie, tell me a little bit about some of the staff that you have at CALM 
who clearly are so well trained, what sort of people are working with the children and their families? Well, you know, it's interesting to hear about the impact we have in forensic, child forensic interviews, because it's actually a very small piece of the work we do. And all of the pieces are, are quite effective. So um, we have marriage and family therapists, we have clinical social workers, we have psychologists, and we have home visitors, paraprofessionals. And um, we are very committed to hiring bilingual, bicultural staff members because you can't really help people if you're not there with them where they are. Um, speaking the same language and understanding where they're coming from. And um, we're, all of our work is, as Deborah said, evidence-based. So we've participated in studies that show, for example, the, um, the work of Deborah's program, which is Great Beginnings, it's the prevention and early intervention, has been very successful in lowering the rates of child abuse reporting um, subsequent to our intervention. Mm. So in other words, the people that we interact with for prevention enter the system at a much lower rate than the general not at risk public. Right. Mm. Uh, Deborah, tell us a little bit about this program you have. Great beginnings, I hear, and it, and it works solely towards prevention. It does. We, this program serves children prenatal through five. And as I mentioned before, whenever we can, we like to enroll families prenatally when there may be some risk factors for abuse, but nothing's happened yet. Uh, we do a variety of things uh, for the families. One thing that we recognize is a lot of women that we see suffer from mood disorders during the perinatal period, uh, pregnant and postpartum. And we know that this can really impact or, or impair their ability to parent and be present for that child and be tuned into that child. So we have our therapists and our home visitors very well trained in identifying postpartum depression so that we can actually provide information, make referrals for evaluation, maybe a medication eval and treatment. That's one of the things that we really um, believe is important. When we're working with older children in the program, maybe toddlers, you know, two and three year olds, um, sometimes the issue will be challenging behaviors. Sometimes those children can get very dysregulated and be aggressive and not really get on that well with their peers, kicking and spitting and not having a language or having language delays. And sometimes this is a result of living in an impoverished environment. And I don't just mean poor, I mean perhaps those children aren't read to. Perhaps they're not exposed to books or, or words. Maybe they're living in chaos or, or some other kind of dysfunction in a family setting. And typically those children, you'll see more behavior problems with them. So we have specifically interventions that address behavior and that help the parent to feel more confident and more effective in their parenting, which in, in turn helps with the attachment and the um, secure relationship between parent and child. Um, then with the older children, uh, I, I must tell you about one other program that we're very proud of is a collaboration we have with preschools. Uh, as children are beginning to get ready for kindergarten and, and beyond, we have a program where our therapists go in and support teachers in some of the preschools where they have some of the most challenging children, some of whom are homeless, some of whom have experienced trauma, have been removed from their family home because of abuse. And teachers, often it's, it stresses their capacity to be with those children every day for eight hours. So we have a program where calm therapists go into the classroom and support those teachers and those families and children. So we, we, we have a wonderful office at Chapala Street and in Lompoc and Santa Maria, but we're also out in the community um, doing work in the preschools, in the family resource centers and the children's natural environments. So Laurie, it sounds like there's just a lot of involvement with the community and with other organizations. 
We're very proud of our collaborations with, um, with organizations uh, from law enforcement to preschools to family resource centers um, to other counseling agencies, the food bank. Um, we really leave no stone unturned when it comes to supporting families. As Deborah said, um, some of our families are experiencing so much stress, housing insecurity, food insecurity, maybe they don't have good access to medical care. And sometimes what it takes is one of um, is their caseworker, their therapist, to really help them navigate the system to get the things they need for themselves and their family. Um, our philosophy is that we do what those families need, and that's why we need community support to, um, to provide that kind of well-rounded support, not just the therapy and 50 minutes go by, goodbye. It's really, um, we, we're committed to doing what the family needs to heal or to succeed as a family. Now, I want to come back briefly before we finish on what the community can do to help, but I know you've got a beautiful letter and some artwork there from someone who has gone through the calm situation. Sure, well this... And I'd, I'd love you to share it with this us because it's actually, precious. This is actually quite a remarkable story. So Deborah's spoken a little bit about um, our prenatal to five Great Beginnings program, but we also do treatment for children who've experienced um, abuse in the family or who've witnessed domestic violence. And um, this child who wrote this was a um, client of our art therapist, Christine, and when she came to Calm, she disclosed that she had been um, raped by an uncle when she was six, and she was a young teen when this was disclosed and her behavior was out of control. Mm -hmm. um, she was drinking and smoking and about to flunk out of school. And she came to Calm and started working with Christine and after about six months, this is what she wrote. Before I came to Calm, I didn't want to live. I was really depressed. I didn't tell anyone what happened to me. I didn't want to ever think about it. To not feel the pain, I would drink and smoke. After I came to calm, my therapist made me see life a different way. Now I want to live. Christine helped me to see and learn so much. She taught me how to tell if someone is safe or dangerous. I'm happier and I have someone who is only good to me. Without calm, I would probably be dead. Oh. And then at the very bottom she writes, I am 15. Oh. That is so touching, isn't it? And such a testament to the work that you do. Wow. Well, on that note, I would love to hear from each of you what you would like the viewers at home today to take away from today's dialogue. Um, whether it be about how the community can help or the message that you'd like to get out to them. So Ben, could, could we start with you? Sure. Well, I, I think, again, the, the main goal and the main focus should be prevention of child abuse in any way, shape, or form. And this organization is the most well-equipped organization locally to help our local kids. The bottom line is uh, who couldn't get behind an organization that benefits our children? If you benefit the children at an early age, you will then have residual beneficial effects down the line. Less crime, because oftentimes we know that abusers, those who are, who are subject to abuse can abuse in the future and whatnot. We're trying to break that cycle, trying to prevent the hand from being raised the, the bottom from being spanked, the voice from being raised, the use of drugs, the prevention is the key and that's where CALM is so instrumental early on and I think that's why for now in the foreseeable future it will be the preeminent 
organization to prevent child abuse in this county, and it's so important to us. Wonderful. Laurie? Well, I'd really like people to know that this is everyone's responsibility. Um, creating strong families, building a community where we look out for one another, um, where we speak up and report if, um, if something suspicious seems to be happening, where we're involved in one another's lives in a caring, healthy way. That strengthens the community for everyone. I would also like people to know that there are ways to get involved with CALM. We um, can always use volunteers to do child care, sometimes to drive clients to their appointments. Um, we want to lower barriers to treatment. So whatever people need to get in, we want to help them with. Um, we can also always use donations. We, um, you know, we rely on the community to get this work done. And without the support of this community, we couldn't do what we do what we do. So I'm hoping you're showing the website on <laughs> well, the please, screen. We will. Uh, what, what is the website? Calmforkids.org and that's the number four. And there's a big donate button and any amount helps whether you can give ten dollars, a hundred dollars, or a hundred thousand dollars. We will put it to good use. We will be responsible stewards and we will use it to make a difference in children's lives. Oh, that's wonderful. Deborah? I'd like to say that parenting children is very challenging. And even with all the resources that one might hope for, it still can be a rough ride sometimes, as anyone of us who have, have, has had children know. And I'd just like to say that it is important to seek help. There is hope. There is healing available. Um, child abuse cuts across all socioeconomic groups and there is still stigma around seeking help if you have a substance abuse issue, if you have a mental health issue, if you yourself were abused as a child and you find some of those patterns and those behaviours creeping in when you have your own children. So I'd just like to say to the audience, please seek help because help is available and everybody wants to be a good parent and a nurturing parent. And whether you reach out to CALM or you reach out to other resources, do this for yourself and do this for your children. That's wonderful. And Laurie, give us that website one more time. It is calmforkids.org, C-A-L-M, the number four, K-I-D-S, dot org. That's wonderful. Well, thank you, Focus, for joining us today and sharing the story of an amazing organization and all the best with the future. You're doing wonderful work and we're very lucky to have you here in the Santa Barbara area. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And folks at home, if you'd like to contact us or find out more about our programming, our website is tvsb.tv. Why don't you drop us a line and tell us about the sort of stories you'd like to see on our show. I'm Christine Davis, and this is the 805 Focus. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.